Okay, so now that we have this pick rest and our stellar picking techniques underway, now we need to get to fretting the guitar. Now the really great thing about this and the last lesson is these two techniques you're going to be using in every single genre from here on out, okay? I mean, every single time you apply your hands to the guitar, you're going to be either picking or you're going to be fretting or doing both probably at the same time. And so these two videos are literally the most crucial videos in regards to developing your basic technique. And your basic technique is really everything. It's your advanced technique, it's your intermediate technique. Your basic technique is your core, you know, and it's what we're gonna be building everything off of. So I really want you to focus on what it is that we're gonna be doing in this lesson because it's really gonna serve you very, very well. All right, so now when I'm sitting down with students and I'm talking about this, there's a few things that I like to mention to them in regards to the basic fretting technique. Now right now, just like a child who's learning an alphabet or, or uh, learning a new skill, or you learning a new skill, because you are in this case, there's a, a lot of information that you're going to have to think of at first. I say a lot, it's really not a lot. A couple things that you're gonna have to think about and you're gonna have to be cognizant and aware of as we're doing them, but as you go on, you're not gonna to have to think about them anymore. So the best, my best advice for you in regards to what I'm going to show you here is don't try to take a shortcut. Really take your time in this lesson and let it sink in and let the technique start happening. But use all the techniques that I'm gonna, all the bits and pieces that I'm gonna tell you here, allow them to sink in and really take them to heart until it starts becoming more natural, okay? When you see your favorite guitar player playing, um, they're not thinking. They don't look like they're thinking, you know, right? They're just playing all over the neck. And right now, you're, it's gonna look the very the opposite to you in that you're gonna really have to concentrate and work on these bits and pieces. But I promise you that if you do that right now, that will fade away and it will just become part of who you are as a player, okay? So let's talk about it. There's really, what I say, there's four things that to me are crucial in regards to fretting. And the first one is to play on your fingertips. And when we're talking about our fingertips, we're not talking about this right here, okay? Even though most people would consider that the fingertip. What we're talking about is the very front of your finger. So if you're looking at your fingers like this, the very tips. In fact, one thing that I will do with students, new students, is I'll take a Sharpie pen and I'll literally take a dot and put it on their fingers, right at the tip, just like that, okay? Anything lower than that, you know, if I were to be down here or something like that, that's not gonna be so good because when you do that, number one, if I'm looking at my hand now, I can see those dots looking straight up at me. And if they're looking up at me, then I know I have my fingers in the wrong place. So they should be down onto the string. So what I like to tell my students is take that dot right there and put that on the fret, okay? So the difference is you can see my hand is like that as opposed to flat, you know? It's more of a curled technique. That's the only way we can get it there is to curl that finger, okay? So putting the dots on your fingers will be very helpful. It will remind you constantly, at least in the beginning, hey, play on your fingertips. Absolutely important. Now, there's several reasons why we want to do that. One, the pad of your finger is much softer, so you're going to have to press a lot harder to get that fret or to get that string to press down to the fret. Remember, when we pick the guitar, it's, the, the string is vibrating between the nut and the bridge, but when we press the string down, we're pushing it down against the fret that's in front of it. So if I press this down, then that fret right there is being pressed down or the string is being pressed down onto that fret right there. If I were to put my second finger right here, then it's pressing the string down right there at the second fret. So important that we play on our fingertips, okay? Crucial, absolutely crucial. Um, later on when we're playing chords, if you're not playing on your fingertips, I could play a C chord here and it looks right, you know? Or if I play the chord, I have a lot of muted notes. Now, if I don't want those muted, right, 
then I need to be playing up on my fingertips so that the strings don't hit the back of my fingers here. And that's what every guitar player runs into in the beginning. Now we have a nice clean chord. So be encouraged with this. Everybody runs into this in the beginning. So it's not you. It's you're learning a new technique, okay? So it's gonna take a little a little while to understand this, to get it down. So it's gonna be awkward at first, but you will get it. Now, if you're gonna be playing on your fingertips, your fingernails need to be cut. So make sure that they are trimmed back to the quick as much as possible. The quick is the part where the nail is attached to your finger actually. So obviously you don't wanna clip that, that hurts. Um, but get right, right before that so that your nails are as short as possible. You can actually train your nails to go backwards. I've done it with, with my left hand. My right hand nails are, the, the beds are longer because I don't clip them very often. So number one, uh, we gotta be playing right there on those fingertips, okay? Number two, you gotta play right behind the fret or that's the, the best place, okay? And what do I mean by that? So if I'm playing the third fret here, here's the fret. And so if I'm right behind it, that's going to be easier to press the string down to the third fret there than it would be saying back here. Watch this. So here's the third fret. As I start moving back here, I'm using the same amount of pressure, but it starts getting muted back there. Why is that? Well, because the leverage is not the same. Here, I'm actually getting to really press that string against the fret, whereas back here, not so much, okay? So if you wanna make it harder for yourself, play back here, okay? You're gonna to have to press harder. It's gonna hurt your fingers more, so don't do it, okay? Play real close to the fret, but don't play over the fret, because this is what happens, listen. It starts muting. Why is that? Because that fleshy part of your finger there is hanging over the fret, and it's impeding the vibration of the string. So we want that nice bright sound, not that dull sound, okay? So we wanna make sure that we're playing right behind the fret. It's very, very important. Another thing that's very important is to play with all of your fingers. So this, again, is very, very awkward for everybody in the beginning, from Jimi Hendrix to Eddie Van Halen. There's not a guitar player who hasn't run through this. Uh, run up to this problem and said, this is, I must not be cut out for guitar, okay? So don't feel that, don't worry about it, it's not you, okay? And, um, and it's the concept of playing with all your fingers because the thumb is so close to the first and second finger that that is a very natural movement. You know, when I pick up a remote control or anything, uh, the first fingers that are gonna grab it are the thumb and the first finger and then the second finger will support and the third and the fourth might support it as well. But that's very common because our thumb is so close to our first and second finger, not so close to the pinky and the third. And because of that, it's natural that those fingers don't cooperate. They're not as nimble, they're not as dexterous, and they just don't wanna work the same way. So we have to get in the habit of using those fingers. What happens when, when guitar players or bass players or whatever just use two fingers or three, then what happens is it limits what they can do. It limits their reach. It limits how many fingers can be used at the same time. So better four fingers than three. If I had uh, five fingers out front, that would be even better, but it's not gonna help my, I need a thumb back here, right? So the more fingers, the better because you can utilize them all. So make sure that with the upcoming exercises and what have you, you're using all the fingers the way that I prescribe. Super important that you do that. Third and fourth finger are gonna feel awkward, I promise you, and the fingertips are gonna hurt a little bit, but use them, okay? Um, and lastly, it's best to leave some room in between the palm, the webbing there of your palm, and the neck, okay? So what I mean is this space that's right in here, that's an important thing to have. Why is that? Well, you know, it's very natural for us to grab things like this, where we palm it. You know, if we're going to dig a hole, we grab a shovel, we would never grab the shovel like this with our fingertips. Not only would that be very tiring to our hands, 
as you're going to see, as you play guitar, you're going to feel those sensations and say, man, that's tiring. I'm, I'm getting worn out. We palm the shovel or an ax or whatever it is that we're doing. We don't want that a, a baseball bat to fly out of our hands when we're playing ball. We've got to put that thing right in the palm of our hand like that, okay? The guitar is different because we're not doing something, uh, we're, we're doing something very precise, okay? We're not digging a hole and trying to that, that trying to not let that shovel leave our hands. In this case here, our body is supporting the guitar and it's not gonna go anywhere. So now we need that hand out front. So how do we do that? Take our thumb and instead of it hanging over the top of the neck, which is a very natural feeling, and in fact a lot of pro guitar players do that because they've been able to develop the technique that will allow them to play all of these chords and still hang their thumb over the top of the neck. Is that bad? Not so much once you've been playing for a while. So you can, you, you know, you're not going to break anything by keeping your thumb over the top of the neck. You're just, in the beginning, for beginners, you're not going to be able to play the things that, that other guitar players are doing. You're not going to be able to play these exercises. So, in the beginning, you got to take that thumb and instead of hanging it up here, you got to drop it down behind the back of the neck. The further down, the more slack you have in your hand out front, as you can see. You know, I've got, I can reach my hand way up here, but if my thumb comes up, now what happens? Well, now my hand has to go down and I can't correctly curl my finger. So if I want that last knuckle curled, which is the most important thing, um, then we've got to do this, okay? So we've got to leave some space between the neck and the palm. So what I want you to do is take the, your thumb, drop it behind the back of the neck like that and that's going to help a lot. Now, another thing it's going to do is it's going to make it very tiring when you're playing these exercises. So playing like this is going to be much more comfortable, but you're not gonna be able to play everything that you're looking for. So, gets, you're, you drop that thumb, you're gonna get strong, you're gonna start feeling better in time, okay? It's gonna feel weak at first, but just trust me, it's gonna feel better in time. And that's gonna allow you to play these exercises. Now, last thing I wanna tell you is to curl that last knuckle, okay? This top knuckle is the most important, and here's why. A lot of guitar teachers uh, who I've sat in with when I was a kid and every, everywhere else, or I've listened to them or read books or whatever, um, they'll tell you different things. They'll say, drop your shoulder. They'll say, uh, you know, get your hand out front. Only do the classical position. Um, uh, other rules that make it stifling for a lot of guitar players. I found that even if you have your thumb over the top of the neck, not that I'm advising you to do that, especially beginners, but even if you have your thumb over the top of the neck, as long as that last knuckle is curled, you typically are going to be able to play everything, okay? Because this knuckle, these knuckles don't matter as much. Really what we're looking for, see I could curl these other knuckles, but if this last knuckle's not curled at all, then these are curled a lot, but the last knuckle's not. That's a one note chord there. Two, two notes, which is not a chord. So I have to curl that last knuckle. The more I curl that last knuckle, the better. Okay, so the way you can do that is you can take your hand and do like a, you've seen in martial arts where they take their fingers and they pull them in like that so they don't get broken. And as much as you can curl that, I can do it at a 90 degree angle angle. I'm not uh, double jointed or anything. Most people can do that. Just take your hand, put it up in the air. If you could do a 90 degree angle, then expect that you could do that when you're playing your chords, okay? So right now, since we're only going to be doing these single notes, you know, and in fact for this video, you can just do, just, just get the basic technique down because this is, we're gonna, I'm gonna follow this up with an exercise for you called dexterity exercise number one. And that's gonna allow you to actually put this into practice. We we're not gonna get into chords yet, so some of these techniques you're just gonna have to trust me on. But I promise you, when you get to the chords, you'll be so happy that you listen to me because you're gonna be good to go and you're gonna be able to play the chords a lot easier than folks who are just saying, oh, I can hear the note, it's playing fine. No. Yes, you could play a bad technique. I could be way back here with an uncurled knuckle, playing not on my fingertip, and it's gonna sound the same for that note, although that didn't really, 
You know, there's bad technique, note sounds the same. But when you're getting into chords and that sort of thing, you're gonna find that it's not the same for sure. All right, my friends, so that is what I want you to, to think of when you're doing these basic fretting techniques. So for this video, you can just try this with a few different fingers, but we're gonna do dexterity exercise number one, which is really where the rubber meets the road, and you're gonna use these four or five techniques that I'm talking about here. Just be looking at them um, while you're doing this, and if you run into any problems, I guarantee you it's gonna be one of those issues. Oh, and of course, you need to press down firmly enough on the string, but that's the last thing, because if you're doing all these other things, it will allow you to have a very light touch, which is really what you wanna have, because it will basically relate to speed and everything else later on, technique and speed and, and what have you. So a light touch is great. Um, worry about or be concerned with all these techniques first, and then if you're still not getting a note out, then press a little bit harder. All right, let's keep going.